Okay, Ted's here, so we're going to start the meeting. And good afternoon and welcome to everybody in this beautiful sunny day in Rancho Mirage. And this is the council meeting for Thursday, January 17, 2019. The council also serves as the library and observatory board, the housing authority, and the city council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. So it's now one o'clock and let's begin and we'll start with a flag salute given by Councilman Ted Weil. Christy, can we have roll call, please? Certainly. Council Member Hobart? Here. Council Member Townsend? Here. Council Member Weil? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Smotrich? And Mayor Kite? Here. Thank you. And today we're going to begin the meeting with several presentations. Uh, we're pleased to introduce Lieutenant Mike Manning to Rancho Mirage today. The city has a long history of dedicated public servants and we are excited to welcome yet another asset to the public safety team. Captain Husky and Lieutenant Manning, will you please step forward to the podium? Good afternoon, Mayor and Council Members. I'm Jason Husky, I'm the Captain of the Riverside County Sheriff's Department at Palm Desert Station. Um, thank you for allowing me to introduce Lieutenant Mike Manning today. He's been a familiar face around here for a while. He's been here since November. But I just wanted to tell you a little bit about his history and his uh, history here in the city and in the valley. Lieutenant Mike Manning began his law enforcement career in 1997 and joined the Sheriff's Department in 1999. Initially assigned to the Palm Desert Station where he patrolled the cities of Rancho Mirage, Indian Wells, and Palm Desert. He was uh, formerly a, a field training officer and then on the burglary suppression team here in the city. In 2006, he was selected to join the newly created gang task force and then promoted to the rank of investigator and assigned to the Special Investigations Bureau at the Sheriff's Department. In 2007, he was promoted to the rank of Sergeant and assigned to the Robert Presley Detention Center and later transferred to Hoopa Valley Station where he supervised contract policing in the city of Norco. In 2013, Lieutenant Manning was transferred to Sheriff's Administration in downtown Riverside to the position of Public Information Officer within the Media Information Bureau. And then in 2016, he promoted to Lieutenant. It was assigned to Thermal Station where he oversaw the contract of La Quinta. In 2018, he was reassigned to the Sheriff's Administration and then most recently back here to Palm Desert Station at the end of last year where he's been serving in Rancho Mirage for the last uh, two months. He lives here in the Valley with his wife and his two daughters and I know that you've met him here at other functions already but I'd like to invite him up to introduce himself. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor, uh, members of the City Council. I'm absolutely honored to be back here after 20 years. Uh, I love the city of Rancho Mirage and uh, all the support that you rendered to public safety. Thank you so much. I do want to remember or uh, want you to, um, or I'm sorry, invite you to the uh, um, cops, coffee with a cop on the 30th at 9 in the morning to 11. And it's going to be at the Starbucks at Rancho Las Palmas here in the city. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lieutenant. Welcome to the team. Thank you. Our second presentation today is a recognition of service for CAL FIRE Fire Captain Mort Allen. It is really an honor today and a great pleasure for me to make this presentation. Today we're bidding farewell to Fire Captain Mort Allen, an exceptional leader and a mentor who is retiring from service. Mort is transferred to the current position in Rancho Mirage Station 50 in January of 2013, <coughs> six years ago, and is now retiring after 32 years of state service. As you know, the city of Rancho Mirage is committed to providing the highest quality of service to our community, and we thank you, Captain Allen, for your dedication to fulfilling that commitment. 
You will be remembered for your great things that you've done not only to our community, but also for every community you served. Captain White, I'm sorry, Chief White and Captain Allen, would you like to step forward, please? Chief White, would you like to say a few words? Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, thank Just you very much. Stand up closer to the microphone. Yes, sir. Bit. A little better? That's better. All right. Mr. Mayor, members of council, thank you very much for this opportunity to uh, recognize Captain Allen for his 32 years of service to uh, CAL FIRE as well as to the citizens of Rancho Mirage. Uh, Captain, Allen, uh, Captain Allen's career spans uh, quite a bit in his 32 years. Uh, started at the young age of 13 years old as a volunteer firefighter in Calabasa. Um, worked his way up to uh, work in the city of Paris, assigned to the Edgemont Station in Reno Valley. Uh, he's experienced all that our department has to offer in both the municipal firefighting as well as the wildland firefighting with a, a, a tour in our Anza Fire Station. Um, he took a, uh, took a transfer to our law enforcement bureau where he was a uh, arson investigator and a peace officer for CAL FIRE and finally um, transferred into the Ranch Mirage Fire Station roughly six years ago. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a great honor having the opportunity to work with Captain Allen. Um, he is just the ultimate professional and cool as a cucumber under pressure. Uh, some of the things that you can see or that we see, you must imagine in 32 years, just some horrific things. Um, I have never seen Captain Allen uh, shook, uh, always a professional, and even after 32 years still says, hey, I hope we get a fire tonight. So um, still loves doing the job and just excited uh, for him to turn this new chapter. So thank you very much for the support and for honoring him. And I'd like to turn it over to Captain Allen to say a couple of words. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor and Council and staff. I just want to say thank you very much for the absolute support you have given us as a fire department. It is tremendous that anything that we need, you're able to support us and get, get what we need anytime. It is absolutely wonderful. I'm going to miss... Uh, working with you guys in the city great, greatly, and everyone has been fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, congratulations, Captain. It's really, really great to have you here today. Uh, on behalf of the city of Rancho Mirage, we've put together a little gift here for you. This is nothing but the finest in uh, glass. Don't drop it. But this really uh, represents our thanks to you, not only as the city of Rancho Mirage, thank you, but all of the members of the council appreciate everything you've done for our community, and uh, it wouldn't have been the same without you. So we really... <laughs> we wish you nothing but the best in the future, and uh, here, if you'd like to take that. And we have a photographer here to uh, record this. In So what's next in the future for you? A little relaxation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 32 years, I think you probably earned it. No more fires. Thank you.
32 years, that's a lot of fires out there. He's done a great job, and we'll really miss him. Now for our uh, third announcement or presentation today will be by Dr. Dennis Maletti. Dr. Maletti is representing the Energy or the Emergency Preparedness Commission. Dr. Maletti, it's good to see you today. Thank you, and it's good to see you, uh, Mayor Kite, Mayor Pro Tem Smotrich, members of the City Council, staff, people in the auditorium audience, and to everyone who might ever see this on Channel 17 for the next few weeks. I come here to extend an invitation to each and every one of you on behalf of the Rancho Mirage Emergency Preparedness Commission. As many of you might know, the commission presents a forum this time of year and has for many, many years related to earthquake preparedness. Our forum this year occurs, you may want to write this down, on February 13th in the Rancho Mirage Library. The doors will open at 5.30 p.m. For half an hour, we're serving free champagne and having a reception where you can meet the commissioners, the advisors to the commission, and the speaker. The program will start promptly at 6 o'clock, and it's absolutely free of charge to everyone who shows up. And it's on a profoundly important topic. When you think about earthquake preparedness, most people think about water, <coughs> dehydrated food, jars of peanut butter. Few people think about financial preparedness and how important it is to be able to rebuild homes and structures when faced with earthquake damage. Over the last couple of years, people on the commission who talk to members of our uh, residents uh, in Rancho Mirage and elsewhere have concluded that very few people know that everything there is to know and understand about earthquake insurance has totally changed. We encounter people with the following points of view. The deductibles are too high, and they once were. They don't insure chimneys, and they once didn't. There's no insurance for block walls and swimming pools. That was once the case. But earthquake insurance rates are now reduced dramatically. They're much more affordable, and people can create their policies however they'd like to design them. So you can insure your chimney. You can reduce your deductibles to low amounts. The sad part of this <coughs> is the people who made decisions not to purchase earthquake insurance did so based now on bad information. And what we've done is invite the man in charge of educating people in the state of California on behalf of the California Earthquake Authority to come to Rancho Mirage so that people in attendance can hear the new program from the horse's mouth, so to speak. So again, starting with <coughs> free uh, champagne, <coughs> February 13th in our library, 530. Thank you for letting the commission make this announcement, and I really encourage all of you to attend. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Are you going to be there? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Are you going to be the, one of the presenters? No. We only have one presenter, and the presenter is from Sacramento and the California Earthquake Authority. Okay. Look forward to seeing you. This is really an important me meeting for the residents of Ranch Mirage. I think so, too. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. 
Okay, we'll now move on to non-agenda public comments. This is an opportunity for the public to speak on issues that are not on the agenda, and we would hope that you would keep your comments to three minutes. So for those of you who have not filled out the yellow forms, this is the form we use for keeping track of who's speaking. And today we'll start with Katie Stice, the Executive Director of the Rancho Mirage Chamber of Commerce doing great things in the very short period of time that she's been there. Katie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council, City staff, and guests here today. My name is Katie Stice, your Executive Director for the Chamber of Commerce, and I've been on the job for about one month now. Right now we have 323 members. We receive about five new members per month. We enjoyed, uh, I've enjoyed lunch or coffee with almost all of the council members. We'll get together soon. Next week. Thank you. Um, we've had positive meetings with the city staff. Um, as I've mentioned to most of you, you're very lucky to have the staff that you do. They've been very supportive of the chamber and it's a great collaboration beginning. Uh, we had a fantastic ribbon cutting at Sunrise Country Club. Thank you so much. It was a great turnout. We celebrated all of their solar lighting. And in the works, of course, the Rammies coming up, Business Awards, January 28th. We have Team Rancho Mirage with Mr. Mayor focused on commercial real estate and brokers. State of the City is being bid out currently. And we also had a very fruitful meeting with the Rancho Mirage Restaurant Association as well. Um, right now, plans underway are for a um, restaurant association map that we can do um, rather quickly to hand out the a and Inspiration. Uh, marketing and communications are also underway for the year, and we also have a board retreat planned with our board of directors. We're really excited to start um, building on the momentum that we have and continue to grow. Um, in this first month, one of the most incredible things I saw in the city of Rancho Mirage is the observatory with the projection. Quite incredible, great work there. And I think the best treasure that I found in our offices as I was looking through and cleaning through some materials was a letter from Lucille Ball when she was elected honorary mayor in 1964 to the city of Rancho Mirage. Um, that's my chamber update now. I'm sure I'll have more for you as we continue to grow and build. Lastly, on behalf of the board of directors and the members, and the community and staff, thank you so much for your support to the Chamber of Commerce. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for coming, Katie. Sure. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, next is uh, Greg Wetmore. Um, Mr. Mayor and Council and City staff, I'm here for a simple heartfelt thank you. I want to thank you for your annual grants. Much appreciated to support both our seven, soon to be eight, and continuing to grow after school programs and the adaptive bike program, as well as the $1,000 donation to us so kindly given in uh, conjunction with the art affair. We had a great time there. And speaking of adaptive bikes, and some of you are near and dear to that program, thank you so much. Uh, the Tour de Palm Springs is just around the corner, and we will have over 55 special needs children on specially made bicycles, and many, many more like me walking the best I can, and over 150 people uh, pledging and supporting the program. We are thrilled to have Desert Lexus as our major presenting sponsor, and other sponsors indeed, and we expect to make about $75,000 on this event. We've taken this event from 2012 with one rider, making $600 to what we are today, and part of that is thanks to you folks. And around the corner from that is our Celebrating Life Without Limits lunch on February the, or sorry, March the 16th at the Ritz. This will be our second, shaping up to be another success as last year's was, and thanks some of you for coming. Appreciate it, maybe you can all come this year. And if any of you know MTU from the high school, Rancho Mirage High School, I'm meeting with David uh, Green tomorrow to talk about another exciting program. And if you've ever heard of The Greatest Showman, I'm not giving anything away, but maybe there'll be something of that there with our special needs children. Thank you all for your support. And by the way, I know of one rider in the tour from the city, Tiana, 
is registered and riding, but I'm sure she's bringing all of you along with her, so be ready for that. Thanks so much. She's definitely putting a, a city team together. <laughs> and, and I'm leaving all of this material with Christy Fourier. Okay, great. Everybody that can get out for that event, please try. It really goes to a, a, good, um, a good cause. So hopefully you'll be able to get out. Okay, the uh, next uh, speaker is Wally Menendez. Uh, good afternoon, uh, City Council and staff and uh, members of the public. <clears throat> I'm uh, Wally Melendez, and <clears throat> excuse me, I, I uh, <clears throat> after shooting uh, wildly for a while, I, I've hit a target that I think I want to stick to. And that is converting the two-year college, college of the desert into a four-year college. And I have very good reasons to, to, to do that. Think of it this way. <clears throat> you put out two-year associate's degrees, and the counselors tell them, well, you can, with what you get here, you can transfer to a four-year college and then you can go on and get your master's. Well, that's the wrong idea. That's, that's, that's wrong. Just think of your um, doctor, your uh, dentist. Wouldn't you rather, when you go to the doctor, when you go to the dentist, wouldn't you rather go to some young guy or some young girl that graduated, that got their bachelor's degree from your college, from your area, from the Coachella Valley. From there, they, they, they went uh, to medical school or uh, dental school, and, and they remember. They remember where they come from, where they came from. They came from, uh, they remember their alma mater. And, and, and they remember the people that helped them get their uh, four-year degree in, uh, 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 when they were growing up. So, so, so these are, are caring people that, 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 that they care for their, for, their, uh, for their peers and for their elders from where they came from. If you put them out of here, well, I'm, I'm talking to you. You're from Rancho Mirage and the College of the Desert right next door in uh, 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 Palm Desert. But I consider Rancho Mirage and Palm, Palm Desert, personally, I consider them sister cities. So, <clears throat> so here you go. So instead of graduating an associate's degree and they go to another college somewhere, and they get their four-year degree, and I don't see any lights, uh, then they consider, where they got their four-year degree, they consider that their alma mater. So, so think that these young people <clears throat> that are very talented and very educated and very capable get their four-year degree from their area. And I'm, when I say area, I'm in the Coachella Valley. And <clears throat> so when you go, when you, me, when we go to the doctor, we go to the dentist, do we want to go to somebody that cares about their area and not somebody from out of state, from out of nowhere that comes to this area and says, oh, well, I'm going to set up my office over there because that's a good area. But they're not, but their, their, their motto, their alma, their soul is not from this area. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Wally. Is there anybody else who would like to speak that did not turn in a yellow form? Okay, thank you. We'll close that portion of the meeting and we'll move on to city council comments. And I'll begin with Ted Weil. Ted. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> the upcoming opening of O'Kane's Irish Pub 
will signify the completion of a noteworthy renovation of the Rancho Mirage Marketplace, home of Gelson's Market. The redevelopment of this center is a testament to the owner's commitment to Rancho Mirage. After a period of uncertainty regarding the anchor grocery space, Rancho Mirage Marketplace is now a destination for surrounding residents and workers. The transition began with a complete renovation of the landscaping with a modern drought tolerant plan resulting in the removal of over 3,000 square feet of grass. The courtyard and the breezeway between Joyce's Sushi and Classic Cleaners was renovated to include a new fountain, benches, patio seating and lighting. Gelson's Market underwent a redesign and renovation of their space, adding several new amenities, including a fantastic food court with a wine, beer, tapas, and sushi bar, as well as a custom pizza counter, an expanded takeout deli station, an olive oil station, and much, much more. O'Kane's Irish Pub would, are getting very close to the much-anticipated opening. It's located along Gerald Ford. The new restaurant will include the former Sabatino's restaurant space, as well as the two adjacent tenant spaces. It will also include an outdoor patio. Uh, representatives indicate an expected opening in February. As the original developers of the Rancho Mirage Marketplace, West Star Associates has become a well-established partner in our community. A shining example of that partnership is yet another contribution on behalf of Westar toward Rancho Mirage Police and Fire Services. Westar has graciously donated $10,000 this year, $5,000 toward each of the police and fire. The contribution is greatly appreciated and will be used to further public safety efforts throughout our community. They did the same thing last year, and they have just been true partners in our community, and it's a pleasure to work with them. With us today is Connor Best from West Star. I'd also like to invite uh, Lieutenant Mike Manning from our police services and Battalion Chief Brian White from Fire Services to join me at the podium. Thank you, gentlemen, if you would. Connor, come on over. The pretty big checks. Well, $5,000 is a pretty, pretty wonderful check anyway. Uh, Connor, you have been associated with this project a long time. I know that your dad was involved in this going way back many years. You've been a great partner to the community. Uh, tell us a little bit about the center and, and the history uh, along with your dad. Thank you, Council Member Weil. My name is Connor Best with West R Associates and um, my father started our company over 35 years ago. And just after that, we made investment in Rancho Mirage. Um, we're just coming up on our 30th anniversary of developing that shopping center with pavilions. And throughout the years, the city has been a great partner to us. The community has been wonderful. It's been our pleasure to serve the community and Ranch Mirage has been a wonderful place to do business. So it's our pleasure to help the men and women of the police and fire departments, or I know it's the county, but uh, the men and women who serve um, the community of Ranch Mirage um, with these donations every year. Thank you very much. Thanks, Connor. That, that's just great. Um, and uh, Lieutenant, maybe you'd like to say something? Thank you so much, Connor, and on behalf of the uh, Rancho Mirage Police Department, this is a greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. And again, CAL FIRE is so important, and one of the uh, Station 69 is located uh, contiguous to the uh, 
center and is a very much a part of, uh, of the fabric of our city. And uh, if you would be so kind. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Connor, for this generous donation to the uh, men and women of the Rancho Mirage Fire Department and Cal Fire. Um, the, uh, the, the kind donation will, will go to further public safety, and we appreciate it very much. Thank you. And again, thank you all for being just such an important part of our city. And uh, this shows the, uh, uh, the cooperation that we get from our developers like Connor, law enforcement, CAL FIRE. Uh, you, make, uh, you make us all very proud. Thank you so much. Connor, thanks for being here and participating in this program. It, uh, Westar has really stepped forward and, and done a great gift here, so we appreciate it. Yeah, it's an it's a excellent benefit to our community and to our public safety personnel. With uh, last year's donation uh, and with our police department, we were able to purchase upgraded bulletproof vests for them. Uh, that the uh, that is not standard issue, so better protection for our officers given the uh, more high-powered weapons that are on the streets today. And then on the fire side, we were able to purchase upgraded equipment in our ambulances, uh, specifically re related to somebody going into cardiac arrest. So these donations uh, provide a great benefit to our community, and they are greatly appreciated. Thank you. That's great. Okay, uh, next in uh, City Council order will be Charles Townsend. Thank you very much, change glasses. For those of you that might have let the weather scare you away from attending the show at the Ranch Mirage Amphitheater last weekend, you missed a great, great performance. Lamone Carr Desert Theatricals inaugural series in the Happy Theater continued with Sinatra Forever, featuring Rick Michaels performing some of Sinatra's greatest hits. Attendees were treated to one of Las Vegas's premier singers and impersonators channeling Old Blue Eyes himself along with a fantastic 12-piece orchestra. Lemon Carr will be presenting Barney and Me on Saturday, February the 9th. Barney and Me is an autobiographical performance by award-winning Hal Linden. Perhaps you know as his character as Barney Miller that ran several years on television. Hal will be performing Broadway tunes, Dixieland and Swing, while illustrating his life and performance. Tickets are available at deserttheatricals.com, and I hope to see you all there. I am so pleased at this new partnership with Lemon Carr and look forward to future productions at our amphitheater. You can also call City Hall at 760-324-4511 for further information. So stay tuned for what we have online for you in the coming season. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Charlie. The program was really great, and yeah. unfortunately, the weather kept people away. <laughs> it did. But it everybody did. who was there was so excited about the program, looking forward to the next one. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, I agree with that. It, it, it was well worth yes, being out yeah. there. It <clears throat> might have been chilly, but... Uh, uh, the the caliber of the performance was outstanding, and uh, it was just a pleasure to be there. And a, an, and again, a, another opportunity to perform uh, uh, to show first class performance to our uh, residents. Good job, Charlie. Thank you, Ted. Also, I want to say that everybody was so impressed. A lot of people that have not been to the uh, amphitheater in the park were just blown away by such a beautiful facility that we have. And that's why we're trying to use that facility to bring first class entertainment to the Valley. Thank you. Okay, the next presenter, Dana Hobart. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll pass uh, 
for this meeting, but next meeting, I'll come roaring back. Well, for County Boy, Lee. look out, look out. <laughs> and Iris Smotrich, Iris? Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. I don't have any announcements today, surprise, surprise, but I did want to extend an enormous and a very special thank you to our Charlie Townsend. Uh, he has been an amazing council member, needless to say, and uh, last week, or at the last uh, city council meeting, um, we had three people who commented about what an outstanding presentation our holiday show was, how much people enjoyed it, and our own uh, Bill Rison even got up and, and yes. spoke about it. Bill spoke, I spoke, and Charlie Townsend spoke. We were all so impressed, and it isn't very often uh, that it, we have so many people that want to uh, sing the praises of a, a, a presentation. Um, and as Bill mentioned, um, this company, this uh, lemon car, could have gone anywhere, but they chose to come to Rancho Mirage. And they chose to come because Charlie brought them. And not only did Charlie bring them to our city, but he also helped make it happen. So if you would all join me in giving Charlie a little bit of applause, I think he's well-deserved. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Iris. I, I must say, though, with that, it's all of us. It's Sean's group. It's Isaiah's support and all of your support on the council that let this happen. And uh, I appreciate that. It's very nice. Okay, that's all the applause you get today, Charlie. That's okay. it? All right. All right. Can't keep a <laughs> yeah. Iris, were you finished with your comments? That's it. Okay. Thanks. Last comment for the day. Uh, this has to do with a program that's being offered at the Rancho Mirage uh, Library and Observatory. On Wednesday, January 23rd, at 7 p.m., the Rancho Mirage Cultural Commission is proud to present Dancing Through the Decades in the desert at the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory. You can sing, dance, or laugh as the desert native Christy Lane entertains you in the colorful and unique tribute to the fabulous Coachella Valley highlighting Rancho Mirage. Picture yourself on a frolicking tour bus driving through time, passing all the wild, wacky, and wonderful people and events that put on the celebrated paradise on this map. With popular music of each decade and easy dance instructions, you will experience the desert's fascinating history as it unfolds and magically changes through the years. A live band will join Christy on the stage, and there will be plenty of room for all of you to dance the night away. So we hope you'll be able to join us. That again is the 23rd, which is next week, and it's at the library, so you'll have a great time and I look forward to seeing you all there. Okay, next we have the, um, where am I here? Next we have the minutes from the meeting of December 12th and December 20th. May I make a motion, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, that we approve the minutes of December 12th? I'll second that. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor, I'll, I'll abstain from the uh, December 12th uh, meeting. I was absent. Okay, well, let's uh, vote on September 12th. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, that's four with one abstention. Okay. And then for the December 20th meeting, the um, that was for the December 12th meeting. This is for the December 20 meeting. Regular meeting. Move right. that we approve the minutes as presented. I'll second that. Please vote. Motion carries five zero. Okay, thank you. We'll now move on to the consent calendar, and that will be presented by Isaiah Hegerman, City Manager. Isaiah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the City Council, you have seven items on the consent calendar today for your consideration. Item number one is to waive the full reading of all ordinances introduced or adopted pursuant to this agenda. 
Item number two is resolution number 2019 SA next in order, approving the recognized obligation payment schedule, the ROPS schedule, and the administrative budget within that schedule for fiscal year uh, 2019 and 2020. Uh, the item of significance on this schedule is a $2.7 million reimbursement back to our housing authority from the former RDA. Uh, so as we have talked about in the past, uh, these loans are how we're uh, subsidizing the operations of the housing authority. So the repayment of these loans are very important to the city. Uh, if this is approved by the city to, uh, council today, it'll be forwarded to the countywide oversight board, which is the next step in the process. Item number three is uh, staff is recommending that the city council appoint Mr. Patel to the architectural review board. Uh, Mr. Patel owns uh, a local firm here in Rancho Mirage. Uh, he w is well qualified. Staff uh, did interviews with potential applicants and Mr. Patel came out on top because of his vast experience within the field. Uh, of note, uh, he has a uh, experience in master planned communities. So this experience will be very helpful to the city as we work through section 31. And he's also uh, an expert with green building. Again, uh, Ranch Mirage has always had very high standards when it comes to development and section 31 will be no different. Item number four, uh, why don't we go ahead and bring up the pictures, Josh. Uh, item number four is the final acceptance of our pedestrian ramp improvements along Highway 111 and Bob Hope Drive. Uh, so we've seen these a couple times within our public works uh, presentations. We upgraded all the ramps uh, to be in compliance with ADA standards. Item number five is the final acceptance of the council chamber audio uh, video system upgrades that we did here. I would like to thank our IT department and our staff and also our public works department. Um, the, the city gets special funding to be able to pay for improvements like this uh, and the results of the project uh, were outstanding. It was uh, a difficult project under a tight timeline because we had to do it in between council meetings. So staff did a great job working after hours and making sure everything uh, would be functioning for our city council meetings. Uh, so thank you to staff for completing that project uh, on time and under budget. Item number six on the consent calendar is an SAF award to a qualified nonprofit. Um, and item number seven are demands, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Excellent presentation by our city manager, as usual. <laughs> any questions or comments regarding the consent calendar? None. Any more applause for Charlie? Uh, well, I'm waiting. I mean, it's been five minutes. Is there anybody in the audience who has a question regarding the consent calendar? If not, can I have a motion to accept it? I'll move to approve. I'll second it. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Okay. We'll now move on to the public hearing portion of the uh, meeting. And we'll go on to item number eight, which is an environmental assessment case number EA160002. General plan zoning map amendment Case number GPZMA18002. And this will be presented by Jeremy Glein, the Director of Developmental Services. Jeremy? Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council. For your consideration today is an entitlement package, as the Mayor mentioned, consisting of an environmental assessment, general plan zoning map amendment, specific plan amendment, tentative track map, and preliminary development plan for a mixed use project known as Rancho Cove. And if I could please have the uh, presentation, thank you. Project site is located in an isolated cove at the intersection of Highway 111 and One Mirage Place. And this is near the Rancho Mirage Cathedral City border. Project site currently consists of 10 individual parcels. A signalized intersection exists at Highway 111 and One Mirage Place which will act as the main entry and exit to the project. There are two off-site digital billboards that flank the project to the north and south. These billboards are not on the subject property. Rather, they are owned by an Indian alati, 
Again, the billboards lie beyond the bounds of the project area, so the applicant has no control over these structures. As mentioned previously, the entitlement package included a general plan zoning map amendment and specific plan amendment. The general plan zoning map amendment, as shown in the upper right corner, would change the zoning of the project site from general commercial CG to MU, which is mixed use, and would also place a specific plan overlay on the property. The specific plan amendment would amend the Highway 111 West specific plan to include the project site and would create a unique, new unique district for this property. On to the site plan. The applicant has proposed a mixed use development consisting of a four story, 100 room hotel, 21,000 square feet of commercial retail space, which has been distributed amongst three commercial pad buildings and 35 residential condos on a site that measures approximately 13 acres in size. Access to the various parts of the project are provided through a series of private streets and driveways, and those are shown in white on your screen. So we're gonna start talking about the individual land uses. We'll start with the hotel, which is the most striking building being proposed. The hotel is proposed to be four stories and 58 feet in height. The footprint of the hotel is just under 19,500 square feet, but is nearly 70,000 square feet across all four floors. The architect uses similar forms and colors throughout the entire project for continuity. And although the maximum roof height reaches 58 feet above the lobby entry area of the hotel, the majority of the structure is limited to 47 feet in height. This is the last image of the hotel, and it's shown in context with the surrounding hillside. The commercial retail buildings have been oriented toward Highway 111 and are situated around a common parking lot. All three pad buildings are limited to one story. These next few slides show the elevations of each commercial pad building. Building one reaches a maximum height of 34 feet and is just under 5,400 square feet in size. Commercial Building 2 is the largest of the three pad buildings at just under 10,200 square feet. This building proposes a maximum height of 30 feet. And lastly, Commercial Building Number 3 has a maximum height of 25 feet 6 inches and is just over 5,600 square feet in size. Should be noted that no specific floor plans have been developed for any of the pad buildings since no retailers have been identified. The floor plans will be developed and designed when end users are identified. Again, colors, materials, and architectural forms are consistent throughout the entire project. The residential component of the project stretches westerly across the site from Highway 111 and occupies the sites, uh, well, the southern portion of the project site. There are five different floor plan types, A through E, but plans A through D all have reverse options. In addition, there are five different color schemes. This slide shows how a plan A and B differ in elevation and look, even though they're the, the plan, the floor plan is uh, very similar. And as you can see, there are subtle differences in roof lines, roof angles, as well as an architectural massing. This slide provides an overview of all five plan types and color schemes. All the condos are two stories. The maximum height of any single unit is 24 feet, nine inches. The plans range in size from 2,533 square feet to 2,609 square feet. There's a fairly even distribution of plans across the 35 units, with the exception of the plan E, which is only used in one instance. Site-wide landscaping is being proposed, but for the purposes of this presentation, I would like to focus on two areas, the main entry and the dog park. <coughs> the entry street will be constructed entirely of decorative interlocking pavers, theme walls, and accent plant materials adorn both sides of the entry street, and a formal rhythm of date palms line the entry median island. What is identified as a dog park is actually a retention basin. Of note here is the location of one of the off-site billboards. The nearest residential unit to this billboard is approximately 180 feet. Staff has conditioned the planting of um, 
couple additional trees um, in order to help mitigate any light and glare from the billboard to that residential unit. Theme walls will be installed around the project. These walls will vary in height, color, and finish to add interest to the project's exterior. The Architectural Review Board reviewed the project. They commented on the siting of the hotel and the property and also favored the landscape plan. They voted unanimously to move the project forward to the Planning Commission. As detailed in the staff report, the Planning Commission considered the project at their meeting on November 8th of last year and recommended approval of the project to the City Council. Staff has not received any outside correspondence from the public regarding this project. And finally, the applicant did submit a series of letters regarding storm drainage, which the city attorney has responded to. So with that, based upon the content, conditions, and findings in the staff report, the Planning Commission recommends that the City Council approve the project. That concludes my presentation, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, city Attorney has a comment. I just have a couple of brief comments here. Um, so as Jeremy... Um, Re, uh, referred to, there were several um, comments submitted by the applicant that, um, with the argument that the city had some sort of obligation to fund the project or fund a portion of the project with respect to the water um, mitigation measures, or the stormwater mitigation measures. The issues that were raised included inverse condemnation, public nuisance, trespass, and natural water course rule. When you look in your staff report, you will see that there's two supplemental staff reports in which I address both of these issues and I conclude that the city does not have a legal obligation to fund any portion of this project. Now, I've had several discussions uh, with Lisa Cobley, who's the attorney representing the um, applicant. I gotta tell you, she's been very professional, very cordial, and I really appreciated that. And one of the questions that came up was whether or not we can present this issue to the council prior to the public hearing. And as she understands, as we discuss, um, pursuant to the Brown Act, we cannot discuss these issues amongst the majority of the council outside the context of a notice meeting. But, you know, two council members can discuss it. And so um, she talked about, you know, how we can get this to the council. And one of the things she suggested was closed session. And because of the potential litigation that was associated with this, I did tell her that the city council could. But I, what I could not tell her is if we actually did, and if we did, what we discussed. So I just wanted to put that on the record. Um, the other issue that came up too, and this has been a um, kind of a long running issue between me and Lisa, and I feel kind of bad about this because I wasn't able to return her call on, a, on the issue of whether or not there was a council subcommittee that was set up. Uh, what I learned this morning and what I couldn't tell you uh, before today, now that I'm going to authorize to tell you, is that the two council members who had initially s expressed an interest in the issue had individually met with the city manager, and after that meeting, there was no request to establish a formal subcommittee to um, re review the matter any further. So I just wanted to submit that in the record. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate the comments. Uh, does uh, council have any uh, questions of staff before we go to the public hearing? I have no questions of staff, but I do have some questions of the applicant. Okay. Any questions down here of staff? I do have uh, one question because you mentioned uh, trees that would be blocking or have some kind of mitigation effect on the billboards. Um, are these trees going to interfere with the billboards in any way? No, the trees are closer to the residential units, um, and they will not block or interfere with the, with the billboards, with the view of the billboards from passing motorists. Yeah, so the, on your screen, numbers one and two are where the billboards would lie, or excuse me, where the new trees would be planted. And then at the top of your screen to the right is where Highway 111 is. Thank you. Okay. Ted, do you have any questions, comments? Okay. All right, we'll open the public hearing, and I'd like to call on the applicant uh, to come forward, and if he would like, and uh, review the project.
Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor, Council Members, and Staff. My name is Rob Nolan. I reside in Costa Mesa, and our offices are located in Costa Mesa. First, I'd like to thank the Council and staff for their time today, as we are excited to be before you and are eager to move our project forward. We are excited to receive a unanimous recommendation for approval from the Planning Commission and hope to obtain your approval as well today. Second, I'd also like to express my appreciation for the great job that the planning staff has done over the past several months on Rancho Cove. It was a big undertaking that went smooth and efficiently. Our team, which consists of all local architects and engineers, worked hard to create a plan that attempted to take advantage of this great cove location along with the backdrop of the mountains. I think they did a great job and we are excited to move forward. We are here to answer any questions you may have, but there is one item that we'd like to address with you, and I'll ask Greg Weiler to come up to address that. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, honorable council members, staff, um, Greg Weiler, co-counsel with Lisa, who uh, Steve was referring to earlier. Uh, we've worked closely with Steve in his office for uh, months and the staff on this one issue uh, that we have a little beef with with respect to off-site stormwater entering, entering into our property. What we would like to restate is a request to meet with the subcommittee of the uh, council to, to uh, put our two cents worth in. And uh, I'm confident that we can amicably resolve um, the issue we have. Um, and I know, I'm sure the staff has presented it. Uh, we do have our own point of view. Uh, so uh, if the, uh, and we request the, uh, the mayor and council to consider a subcommittee to meet in the, as soon as possible, consistent with the, the uh, schedule of the, sta uh, the staff and the, and the council members to discuss our concerns and see uh, if there's anything that the, uh, that the uh, city can do with respect to this, this issue that we'd like to educate the council on. Um, we know Steve's been in a difficult position because he's counsel to the, uh, legal counsel to the uh, city council and we keep uh, requesting, hey, what, what can you tell us? And again, he's been uh, very professional and I appreciate you telling us today where you, where you stand. Um, but, uh, and I appreciate that uh, several council members have discussed it, uh, but if it's, uh, if it's possible, we'd love to meet with the subcommittee uh, and, and work with them and see if we can move this forward a little bit. And uh, with that, answer any questions you have with respect to that stormwater issue. Would you like to spend a few minutes discussing the issue? Um, it's it's fairly complicated, and uh, there's engineering involved. But it's basically offsite stormwater being concentrated and a, um, a certain quantity uh, put onto our property, and the percentage is subject to the engineer's determination, which we submitted to the staff. Um, so we have requested in some manner some participation with us because we have to, pursuant to the conditions of approval, handle that stormwater on our site. We can't have a, a project that doesn't work with respect to stormwater, um, but whether that percentage is 1% or 100% or $1 or a $1 million, um, we wanted to present that to the, to, uh, with the staff, of course, to uh, the, the council subcommittee and then uh, that subcommittee could present it to the council in closed session or however uh, the city attorney feels it should be presented. So you're, you're addressing an issue of, of financing the project? Is that what your concerns are? No, it's just the, uh, the who's responsible for all the mitigation. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, do, should we have to expend dollars to mitigate uh, storm water from um, uh, developments upstream? Ideally, 30 years ago, if we could have had everybody contribute fair share 30 years ago, but sometimes these things take their, uh, a life of their own, and we inherit, we're the last guys in town, so we inherit it. So that's what we wanted to discuss with the subcommittee. Okay, thank you. Dana, did you have a question? On yeah, I, I, I had several questions. Uh, first off, for the benefit of the public who uh, will be watching this or hearing this, um, I think uh, we owe them a little more uh, descriptive uh, uh, outline of what the issues are. As, as I understand things, uh, uh, your clients have purchased uh, the land or at least have it under contract. Uh, and you plan on building uh, the hotel and uh, the other um, modalities of um, sales and so forth. Uh, <clears throat> but apparently, uh, in your uh, pre-purchase negotiations and um, observations, you did not determine 
that uh, there was uh, water runoff uh, that had occurred over some period of time that uh, uh, later was learned to affect uh, some of your costs with respect to dealing with that water runoff. Um, I notice in a letter from you, I think it's from you, yes. There's two or three, yes. The letter from you of November 8, 2018, uh, down toward the end, uh, you indicate that uh, although you're very much in favor of your project, that uh, you reserve the right to, to file a lawsuit against the city, claiming that the city had some obligation to uh, be aware of uh, the water runoff issues, inform you, or the city was negligent uh, in not having some developers up on top of the hill or further up the hill um, take care of the water in a manner that didn't affect your property. And uh, so we find ourselves in a position where uh, we very much like your project. I think I'm speaking uh, for everyone. I'll find out in a minute. Uh, but I certainly like the project, and uh, uh, it puts us in an awkward position of uh, voting for your project, knowing that uh, you're going to sue us uh, if uh, we don't uh, pay up or somebody else doesn't help you uh, meet uh, the financial uh, cost of uh, solving the uh, problems that you've in encountered. And uh, so uh, you talk, you ask about having a meeting after uh, today. Uh, it doesn't make sense to, appro to approve the program, uh, your, your whole plan, uh, when we uh, are planning on having further discussions uh, with respect to some of the costs. So a future meeting is not likely to occur uh, and certainly, uh, I can't imagine uh, why it would occur from the city when the city's position has been expressed to you. And uh, it's not like we see a close question of law that could go this way or could go that way. Uh, but rather, we see this as a clear uh, matter where the law is completely on our side. And... Uh, we don't want to encourage you into thinking that some subsequent meetings might uh, uh, result in uh, some uh, uh, of our undertaking some of the costs, uh, paying some amount of whatever your, your costs would be. So if we go forward and approve your project, uh, which is what I'd like to do, uh, then it's, it's not that we can't talk, but we're not, we're telling you, unless we learn something different, we're telling you now that we do not believe we have any fiscal liability. And um, so to meet on that subject uh, would be a colossal waste of time. Uh, you have other people that you can consider, I know, and you've mentioned some of them in your letter. Um, and uh, we find this to be a very difficult, awkward situation. We don't want to be antagonists when we're protagonists. Uh, and uh, uh, you might have some ideas as to uh, how, we, how you would like to have us move forward um, uh, from this point, knowing right now that we are committing to you that we do not see that as a legal liability of the cities and the city is not going to participate in the cost of the project. Mr. Mark, Hobart, um, I really appreciate it. We're the same boat, and I think the staff will, will back us up. Is you know, last thing we do is want to come and butt heads with, with the jurisdiction that's been so good to us to work with, and we've developed this great project. We have this one little beef, um, and we would like to get the project approved. And we've request, uh, re requested a meeting to discuss it, but we'd like to proceed with the project. Um, I've looked closely at um, the city attorney's analysis on responding to, to our position, and he disagrees with us. And, and uh, again, it's, it's 
not all the stormwater. It's a portion of stormwater, and and we may have a beef with the with the people upstream from us, or we not may not have a beef at all, and, and we're big boys when we go in and build our project. <laughs> One thing we know is the storm mitigation has to be stormwater mitigation has to be put in if we're going to pr proceed with it. Um, so. I don't think we want to delay the project approval and then hope for a meeting, which you've pretty well expressed that you, know, you don't think a subcommittee um, would be constructive. We'd still like a chance to present it to you and give it our pitch. But if you don't think that, if you think it's a waste of time, but we would like to proceed. And we don't want to be contentious with the uh, with the, uh, we 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 said our piece. And whether it's the city or these upstream people, the upstream it, the city's not putting water on us. The city, this upstream people are, and it comes down to city street. Uh, so, in a, for me to do my job, I have, obviously have to to put our position forward, and, and Steve, uh, city attorney, has to put your position forward. He's made it pretty clear. So we understand. Um, I don't think we want to uh, continue the project. We want to have you. Probably uh, there. We want to have uh, action tonight, if we could. And uh, again, maybe um, after the fact, you guys can decide whether you want to talk or not. We continue talking with the city attorney and the uh, planning staff. We really appreciate the the efforts of the staff. The planning commission was very constructive, um, and I think we've got a great project. It's just one minor component, um, and we do have engineers and estimates and all this other stuff. So you can see why we're complaining a little bit, but um, we want to move forward with the project. Well, on on uh, on that issue, uh, just one question: When you when did you first discover <laughs> that there was this runoff? Uh, issue that uh, is the center of, of our focus. I'm glad you mentioned that, Council Member, um, because it wasn't a due diligence problem on it. We always knew, and we knew we may have a beef with the people upstream. Um, so it's, you know, we know when we're in an alluvial fan and we're down there on Fernie on 111, it's not like we're going, oh my God, stormwater comes down here. We always knew, but we didn't uh, quantify it until we got the engineers involved. And in, in fairness to everybody involved, the staff's been working with us on this for months, the city attorney too. And as we move and plummet towards the council approval, we, went, we wanted to, to have this resolved so we didn't even have to send letters in, but uh, the, the time came down. So we put the letters in. We were talking with the city attorney even this morning. Um, and the staff continually. Uh, so it wasn't a due diligence item. It wasn't a surprise, but it, uh, we, do, we have just recently, in the last few months, quantified the amount, uh, and that's what we're going to discuss in the subcommittee. So you did know this from the beginning going in? It wasn't an oops thing halfway through the project that you discovered this? No, we, we knew from the very get-go. Um, we hadn't quantified it, but we knew there were upstream people uh, putting water down on, on our site through, through right. um, you can go through those improvements. Yes. And uh, uh, so it's when you when you say you knew from the get go, does that mean you knew before you bought the property or does that mean you learned it after you bought the property or committed to buying it? We knew as any developer that we have to deal stormwater and we and we knew obviously we looked at the Google Maps. We've walked the site. We did our due diligence. Um, do you want to address that? As Greg said, we, uh, as part of due diligence, I, I think if there was an oops moment, we didn't realize the, uh, the amount of water that would be coming down Frank Sinatra through the ravine onto our property. Do you have any estimate as to um, what the total cost of the water runoff will be as far as Remediating issues down on your property. Yeah, so the so the the plan that you're that's up for approval today includes some underground storage. We do have uh, the quantity of water, the estimate, and then we've also our engineer has worked on um, one or two alternatives to try and uh, reduce that cost, if you would, which would basically be surface surface retention over underground. Okay. I have another question. Yes. From going into this, when you looked at the numbers, are you saying that you cannot afford to build this? It would not be profitable for you to do what has to be done and make a profit on this project that you would have to walk away from it? So I, I would tell you today, uh, based on where they kind of the market is today and the, the cost associated with underground, um, it would be, we're, we're right at the margin. I'll, I'll put it to you that way. Um, if you look at it from a surface standpoint, we are still analyzing that to understand the, uh, the full impact, um, but I think that would be much less, and I, I can't tell you where the, where the profit would be. Thank you. Have, have you prepared a pro forma on this property based on your hotel projections? and? Oh, uh, yeah, basically an overall business plan, yes. 
and was that wasn't sent along with the uh, the information concerning the project itself that you mean this particular item right no we just i think we, we forwarded the uh engineering uh items as well as estimates that came from the engineer on the amount of water that's coming down the ravine yeah, just for the and again i don't want uh, i don't want your your prudent consideration of the project get hijacked by by this one issue because I think we got a great project but what we have discussed with the uh, with the staff for six months or a year is okay we have a problem we're not sure if it's a dollar or, or half a million dollars whatever it is uh, maybe we can solve it and, and let's say upstream people let's not say the city because we're not making you guys bad guys uh, maybe we can use a portion of transient occupancy tax maybe we uh, ideally we'd form a, an assessment district with all the properties and everybody pay their fair share or uh, but again, those properties are built. Uh, CFD for ours, that means has us, our guys paying it all. So a bunch of things we've explored, uh, and that's what we wanted to present uh, in, a, in a less formal uh, uh, form. Well, I suppose that if we uh, did uh, approve uh, the project, that uh, that doesn't mean you have to go forward with it. You always have that, have that uh, choice to make down the road. Correct. Uh, okay. Well... Uh, I can I can tell you that one of the things we'd like you to look at closely uh, early on is something that uh, working with our city attorney is we'd like to have out of the picture uh, the potential of litigation against us. We don't want to be wearing two hats as we go forward on all, all the other things because um, it does influence even though uh, we like the project. I think it's very good project. I like it a lot. Uh, but I'm not enthusiastic about approving something that's going to result in a lawsuit litigation with the city. Uh, uh, we would hope that somehow got out of the way. But I have nothing further on this. I plan on uh, making a motion to approve the project unless I hear something from my colleagues that, that dissuades me. Dana, are you saying to approve it with the removal of the stipulation of a lawsuit? No. Okay. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm available to answer any questions on that one issue, which I was just supposed to be here and talk for 10 seconds, and it was a little longer. Uh, but uh, I'm confident that working with uh, the county council and planning staff that, that we're, we can amicably resolve this issue and move forward. Uh, I, I agree. I know, I know we can move forward uh, based on discussions with staff and city attorney. Excuse me. Okay, well, let's uh, continue the public hearing, and okay. if there are any questions, we'll come back to you. Right. Thank okay. you. Okay, well, you know, while you're up there, I have a couple of questions uh, aside from the water mitigation. Um, on page um, of our uh, agenda here, 8-28, uh, uh, you talk about a couple of things, but you also um, stated that you had... Uh, spoken, Mr. Nolan said that he has spoken to several flags and operators but have not yet to select one. Is that still the case or have you come up with an operator or a flag that you think will be viable? We have not chosen that yet, an operator nor a flag. Okay, and another th uh, question is, are you building this project to sell it? So, um, from a land development standpoint, I think we, we, there are some improvements we have to do. The idea would be is to partner up with a uh, flag or operator, and then on the homes, it would be to fee build with a, a local or regional home builder. As it relates to the retail, we really haven't made any decisions on that. Okay, and you also uh, say that you are not considering participating as a landowner. Um, what exactly does that mean? I'm not sure what you're referring to. I'm sorry. Um, and I okay, because it was. Um, it was uh, from the minutes of the planning commission meeting, um, and it uh, it reads that Mr. Nolan stated that we'll probably do the majority of infrastructure at the main entrance, partner with a residential builder for the residential port portion of the project, perhaps sell the hotel portion to a hotel operator. Um, and it also says, for now, you're considering participating as a land developer. 
So again, that, go, that would go back to um, the fact that some land development needs to be done to be able to deliver the individual parcels, whether it's the hotel or the retail. I think the comment that uh, Jeremy made in the, uh, in the report would relate back to the residential where we would again stay in with an actual builder as, a, as the developer landowner. Okay, and yeah. one last question. Sure. Um, how would your project or your hotel be rated by the travel industry as far as the stars that would be uh, given once two star, three star, yeah, four star? Yeah, I would star? say it, it would be the three star range. Okay. Uh, I, 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 to be honest with you, I'm not sure how those stars are specifically rated. Um, but it would be three to four stars. I think five star, if I recall correctly, is a resort. This would not be a resort. This would be more in the full service range. Okay, thank you. Sure. Would you anticipate any change in the basic layout of the project, uh, reducing retail, reducing residential or hotel? So the answer to that question is yes, based on what we end up doing with surface uh, retention or detention. Um, really, I think the idea is that the site may, may shrink a little bit. So if we had to move the hotel a little bit, we may, move, we may lose a little bit of retail. Um, and then the same with uh, residential. Okay. And uh, as you said, you don't really have any tenants lined up? For no, not yet. The retail space, have you looked at that carefully to determine really whether that's a profitable situation? We have, and, and uh, we are basically we're analyzing it, continuously analyzing it. I'll just put it to you that way. Okay. Any other questions before we go back to the public? Uh, so that, that retail space that's been allocated when the three separate buildings, that could change? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And answer just what where uh, Iris was going. So this is really very flexible in what could really happen down the road from the hotel to the retail, as Richard said. So it's really not set in concrete. Well, I, well, I could I, probably answer that yeah, for you. Thank. Um, so it's, it's very typical with these types of projects that don't have uh, a hotelier or an operator identified yet. Once they have somebody, um, inherently some changes are going to be ne going to be needed. And so as tenants are signed, there there are likely to be some potentially minor tweaks to the site plan. Um, if there are major revisions that need to be made, then it will come back through the process for your review again. But as it stands, if this were to be approved today, this is what we would expect to be built out there. Jeremy, it sounds like the, the unknown factors here in the development of the project really could be uh, very from where they are right now based on the solution of the, the water problem. Potentially. So depending on what, this, what is approved there, then that will change the, the layout of the uh, property. It could. Any changes to the retention or the drainage solutions um, would be submitted back to the, to the engineering department and they would review a new hydrology study. Um, and then if that did result in substantial changes to the layout and the site plan, um, that could come back before you for a final design. And yet we're being asked today to make a decision based on the unknown factors out there, financing, development, the other issues. Seems to me like this is pre really pretty premature. Well, the th what, what is certain is all the planning and engineering. The project that they've proposed and submitted will work from a planning and engineering standpoint. And for instance, if they do uh, sign an operator that wants to keep it the exact same and participate and build the project as it is, then they can do that. It, it works and it functions properly. Yeah, and, and this is within the standard process of most developments. Uh, so uh, the city is very accustomed to approving a project and sometimes those projects modify over time for various reasons. It could be the market conditions, the operators, uh, numerous factors can uh, cause a project to shift or change uh, the layout of it. And again, the city follows a process to consider that. So uh, this is within the normal process of approving a development plan. Sometimes things change, and then those changes will flow through our process according to our code. Roger, may I 
Richard? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I just want to echo what uh, our city manager said. Uh, we have worked with uh, the developer uh, for a long time, period of what, maybe a year or so now. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't think there's anything about this that makes this meeting today premature. I think everything is in order. We have some unresolved issues, but those issues will remain unresolved regardless of whether it went back for some reason or didn't. So uh, I, uh, I do want to commend you uh, for diligently pursuing this and bringing it forward and let you know that uh, uh, I certainly think that this would be an ideal uh, project for the location uh, in the city that it's destined to be at. And uh, we hope that some of the unanswered questions are answered uh, very positively and beneficially for us all. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, may I, uh, just before you leave for a moment, uh, what, what, if anything, have you done as far as pursuing possible financing for the project? So uh, we own this property outright. Right. Uh, my uh, financial partner is, um, is uh, committed to doing at least the land development potentially the, the build-out of the residential, and again, probably partnering up on the hotel side. There you would typically bring in an operator and or a flag that would kind of put their own footprint there and provide all the financing. Uh, the reason I say that, I, I, being a developer myself, <clears throat> I know the difficulty in getting financing today, particularly for a hotel. It's, it's a real challenge. And, uh, you know, looking at the project, I concur that the project looks good. It's a nice project. Uh, and I, for one, would be supportive of the project. But on the other hand, I wouldn't want you to be under any misimpression that should this council approve the project, uh, you would anticipate any participation, any financial participation on behalf of the city at some point in the future. I think that would be misleading you and don't want you to have that uh, impression should there be an approval today. Okay. No, I, I, we completely understand. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience who would like to comment on this project? Yes, would you like to come forward, please? And your name, please? Wally uh, Melendez. I side with the city council, the project should, should be shelved for further debate. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the audience? Okay, I'll close the public hearing. And uh, take comments from uh, from the council. I was going to make a motion. Can we make the motion and then take comments? Why not? Second. Huh? Motion, second comments. Right. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mayor. I would move the filing of a mitigated negative declaration based on environmental assessment case number EA one six zero 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 two as well as now adoption of ordinance next in order, approving general plan zoning map amendment, case number GPZ, as in zebra, MA18002, and move further in the adoption of ordinance number next in order, approving specific plan amendment, case number SPA16001, and move approval of tentative track map number 37122 and move approval of preliminary development plan case number PDP 16003. And I would second that. Okay, there's a motion of second. We have any comments from uh, council regarding this issue? 
I think it's all been answered. The only comment I have uh, regarding this property, I'm a little bit concerned about the city making a decision on this property with the idea that we're going to have to come up with some funding in the future. Well, Richard, that's exactly what we've written out. We've said we won't be coming up with money on this project. They have to do like everybody else does, um, come up with their own money. Uh, and we're not obligated by anything that we've said or done today, including this motion. We're not obligated in any way uh, to help fund uh, this, uh, this plan. It was my impression in the initial discussion that the suggestion that we have a joint meeting study session was really focused on how are we going to take care of the financing well, of some of this groundwater uh, costs. I think you're right that that was part of the focus. Uh, however, uh, regardless of their focus in presenting something, it doesn't mean that we accept the premise nor that we adopt uh, the outcome that they would hope for. Uh, and we've frankly told them, we hope you build it, but don't plan on using city money to build any part of it, nor to solve the water issues. Yeah. Well, as long as that's understood, I think uh, we, we have a project that can go forward. Uh, yeah, I think so, too. I think we have a, a, an excellent project that, uh, if it does go forward, uh, it will be a real uh, credit to the city and to the development team. Any other comments? Well, Mr. Mayor, I think uh, Jeremy explained exactly uh, what we're voting on. Does that sound? What do you mean? Okay, maybe you can explain again, Jeremy. Yeah, so for the purposes of your consideration today, it's the um, applications that Councilman Hobart mentioned. Um, it's not committing the city to any financial obligations. We've not changed any conditions of approval or anything in the staff report. Um, it's the same as it was when it went to the went to the planning commission, and so nothing has changed regarding that. So, is it your feeling that this project can go ahead uh, based on the current condition, with the idea that the city provide no funding? Yeah, based on the plans and engineering that were submitted, um, staff feels that this is a, a good use of the land and an appropriate project with no financial contributions from the city. Okay. Okay. I just have a, a question just to further help me with this. If we approve this and it goes forward and they do not want to build it and football it off and sell it to somebody else, land and the, and the project, without them telling the new owners, what is up there and that there is a problem? Do they have to disclose that and it will never come back to the city that the new people buying this, they never knew about it? Long question. There's no way they could hide it. And yes, they would have to disclose that as a matter of law. They would have to disclose any defects in the property that would affect construction uh, or sales price. So, yeah, so it would never come back to us. No, it wouldn't. Okay, thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Uh, any questions, comments here? We have a motion and, and we a have second. a second. Yep. And if you would please vote. Motion carries 5 0. Okay. We look forward to, luck. Uh, yep. to the future hmm. working with you, and hopefully, this will turn out to be a great project. Very good. Okay. That's the end of the uh, public hearing portion of the meeting. And we'll now move on to the action calendar. And this is uh, resolution number 2019, next in order, to join CSAC, Excess Insurance Authority, for their dental program. And this will be presented by Kofi Andabam, the Director of Administrative Services. Kofi. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, Council. The item before you this afternoon for consideration is a recommendation that the city of Rancho Mirage join the California State of Counties, CSAC, Excess Insurance Authority for Dental Program. CSAC, Excess Insurance Authority, is a joint powers authority formed under the applicable sections of the California Government Code for the purpose of jointly funding or establishing excess and other insurance programs as determined for its members. You may recall that 
the city in December 2018 entered into a new memorandum of understanding with the Rancho Mirage Employee, Employees Association. Included in the negotiations for the new MOU is a switch of the city's dental plan from Guardian to Delta Dental. By joining the authority, the city would participate in its pooled dental program similar to other insurances um, that the city has at a lower cost compared to the standalone um, Guardian Dental Plan currently offered to Rancho Mirage employees. There is no fiscal impact to the city for joining the authority. Staff recommends that the city council approve this, um, the city to become a member of the CSAC Excess Insurance Authority and authorize the execution of related documents as, as outlined in the staff report. That concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Okay, excellent presentation, Kofi. Uh, any comments from council? Comments here? It's a good move. Delta's a very good company. It's a good move, certainly, for the employees. They'll benefit from this significantly. Uh, any questions or comments from the audience? Okay. Any uh, comments from the uh, city manager? Uh, just that this action will actually reduce city costs. Okay. That's good. Huh? <coughs> okay. Uh, could I have a uh, motion, please? I'll make a motion that we approve. Second. With what? Okay, there's a motion and a second to approve this item. <coughs> this is resolution number 2019, next in order. Uh, there's a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5 0. Okay, thank you. That is the last of the um, items for the day, and now we'll go to the city attorney for the closed session. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The city Council is now going to recess into closed session pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9D1 regarding the following pending litigation matters. Veronica Juarez et al. versus City of Rancho Mirage and New Singular Wireless DBA AT&T Mobility versus City of Rancho Mirage. That it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're going to discuss one potential case. The facts and circumstances that might result in litigation against the city are not yet known to the potential plaintiff, which is why I'm not going to explain the facts and circumstances. And that is... We can do that pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9D2. Thank you, Steve. No resource into uh, closed session. Thank you for all being here today. <laughs>